welcome to another episode of Road to Tokyo. I'm joined by New Zealand shot put legend, Dame Valerie Adams. Kia ora, Dame Valerie. Kia ora. Thanks for joining me. Thank you. After such a long, successful career, mm -hmm. you're about to head to your fifth Olympic Games. Mm -hmm. Not many people can say they've done that. Mm -hmm. What does that mean to you? I'm old. <laughs> um, it's just it's wonderful. It's wonderful to have the opportunity to be able to still compete for your country and um, at my fifth Olympic Games and still be competitive at the age of 36. I was 18 at my first Olympic Games and um, to be able to still be standing here today fighting strong and being able to go to these Olympics in, um, with a different mindset and you know obviously a different body, an older body and as a mum makes it that much more special for me. And how has the preparations this time round been so different due to the fact that we've been in a pandemic? Yeah, you know, um, in a different world, we would have been in Switzerland already, um, the Olympics would have been done and dusted, you know, all, all, all of that. But I think, you know, with the pandemic happening, you have to um, make those necessary changes to put yourself in a better position to be able to train for these Olympic Games. So for me, that choice was to go down to Christchurch. I needed something to change for me after last year and after the spring series was I need something new, I need something fresh to, to kind of push the boundaries a little bit. So I did decide to go down to Christchurch and spend some time there. I've been there for eight months now and I just moved back in the weekend and it's been the best thing I could have done. It has been, uh, hasn't all been easy. Um, it's had its challenges, however, um, I am pretty pleased to have take that leap of faith and, and go down there and train um, with the crew down there. And touching on those challenges, you've got two adorable kids at home now. How was it having to train, be away from them, but now also coming back to them and then soon departing? Yeah, you know, that part's been very difficult for me, but I always make it um, as painless as possible for them. You know, I kind of say goodbye to them um, without them even knowing I'm leaving type of thing. You know, they are, they, they're two and three, and normally on a Sunday afternoon is when I go back to Christchurch. So, and we normally got the um, Sunday feast going with the Fano, so it, that makes it easier for them because then I just slip away and, and go to the airport. I don't like to make a big deal out of it because it would hurt me more know seeing them cry, you know, and because eventually they'll they'll stop crying and carry on with their lives where it would probably hurt me a little bit more. So now for me it's real preparing for leaving because this time it's I'm not you know, an hour away by plane, I'm not gonna be be able to come back so easily. You know, it is gonna be a four month stint. So that's hard. Um it's been a lot of, uh, I guess, thinking and emotion, um, emotional feelings I'm feeling, talking it through with my husband, what is the best way to do this for our children? And I, you know, we're deciding that together that I'm going to do the same thing. Um, that's all right, take your time. Yeah. But that's hard. Yeah. And it's good because at least te technology these days, mm -hmm. you can FaceTime them, you can still see them, so in a sense they are still always there for you. Yeah, absolutely, and uh, what I want for them, like, you know, again, in a different world, they would have come with me, you know, would have no, no brain of my mother-in-law would have been there, like, it would have all been good, but um, <clears throat> for them, they'll just, you know, I know I don't want to disrupt their lives, you know, they'll just carry on with life and all the rest of it, for, but for me, I think this my saving grace is having a great support network around me to be able to care for them. I know they're going to be well looked after and I know they're going to be just fine, but I think it's just um, processing being away from them, knowing full well, you know, they are only two and three, however, they're going to grow so much in those four months, you know. They're going to be talking more by the time I come back. They're going to be, you know, Pukki one is probably going to be so much more sassier and all the rest of it, but there is a little bit of, um, a little bit of mum guilt, you know, because, you know, I don't want to miss out on anything, but I know, uh, this is what I need to do. Um, this is what I am uh, have planned to do and have prepared to, to do. So I am looking forward, in the same breath, to go to going away to be being able to compete against my counterparts and also be prepared for Tokyo. And how's that transition been? Going from being a mother going back to the life of an elite <laughs> athlete? Um, let's just say that my sleep average when I'm back up in Auckland with the kids is down by two hours than when I am in Christchurch. So, you know, that's the reality of life. You know, that's just normal, you know, normal life. Um, it is a massive transition, but I am looking forward to going back out there and finding that competitive spirit that I, you know, ha had throughout my career that I found a couple of times this season. I am looking forward to being in, in like, 
on the international circuit again, but also competing against my, my counterparts. I am excited to go through and actually bring out that don't F off me look again, you know? You know, that, that real game face situation where, you know, I feel confident and, and I feel um, ready to rock and roll type of thing. So I am very pumped for that and, and very pumped to get into some heat. It's very, very important for me to make sure that I make each day count. Now it is the turn of Valerie Adams. She's going to need to draw upon all of her experience, all of the training. It's a good first up throw. Let's have a look. That is a very good throw. And the fact that you haven't been able to compete overseas, yeah. but the fact you get to compete locally again. Yeah. What does that mean to you? Like competing in front of your family, going back to old stomping grounds. How does that feel? That's cool. Yep. Um, but the hardship to that is actually not having the competition. So it's a catch-22. You know, I was very lucky. I had a great competition when I did compete. That one time I was up in Auckland, I competed so well. You know, I took massive, you know, comfort and, and energy from my family being there and my kids being there. Um, so that was awesome for me. It was a great opportunity to be able to do that here at home. As she tries to extend that lead. Now, here's uh, Valerie Adams with her first attempt in the shot put. Oh, that one got a good share. And she gave it a little cheeky clap as well. I think she's pretty happy with that one just quietly. But, you know, we obviously lack competition and that's what we need because that's the only way we'll be able to challenge our competitive spirit and our competitiveness is actually being put under pressure and have people chase your ass, like right on your ass, you know, type of thing, you know, or beat you and you have to chase them. You need to be able to be put in those situations and I need to put myself in those situations multiple times before we get to Tokyo because it's the only way you're going to be able to fight that good fight. So I am looking forward to all of that. I have been keeping an eye out into what the rest, rest of the world is doing, um, ranking wise and performance wise and all the rest of it. So it's all very exciting. Training down in Christchurch. Mm -hmm. You're training in a group now and you've been training with Tom Walsh and a few others. How, how has that been, training with the men? Um, <laughs> if you can call them men. Um, <laughs> It's been different. Um, Dale's group has been um, very good to train with, especially you know in, in a group situation. Um, we've been able to have a few comps, you know, in, in house has been great because we can obviously push each other. That's been awesome. But just to have other people to, to train, you know, makes a big difference. Um, so that's been quite helpful. You know, I've been able to make some pretty cool friends as well whilst whilst I've been down in Christchurch. So Christchurch in general as a city is, is really nice. Um, just a massive culture shock for me. Very different. Yeah, and you've got some new up-and-comers joining you as well mm -hmm. in the shot put. What does that mean to you to see so much growth throughout the years come through and for them to join you as well and potentially the, your, their idols? Ultimately for me is to be able to leave, you know, when I eventually do retire, to leave the sport in, in, a, in a better position than what it was when I came into it. But it's awesome. For me it's awesome. You see a lot of youngsters. You've got Maddie's, you've got the um, Lauren Bruce, uh, Connor Bow. You know, I think Connor told people that he was in nappy, nappies when I was at my first Olympics. He did. Great. Uh, you know, he's a young 19 year old now and it's just awesome to see his growth as an athlete coming through. It's awesome, I guess, this sport that the future of athletics is just growing and growing and growing and now hopefully from there that growth can also bring back medals um, in, in the future so that's that's exciting for me. Touching on retirement. Yeah. Dare I say it? Say it. Hopefully this is not your last Olympics. Is, is there still more left for Dame Valerie? I've had that question many times before and people are probably going to continue to ask it. So me, I am, my mind is to Tokyo. You know, having that year to really um, recommit to Tokyo. That took a lot, of, a lot of guts. Then I recommitted and here we are today. When I did go down to Christchurch, I, um, Dale and I talked and you know, we did come to a conclusion that we will review our relationship, or not our relationship, our, you know, how we've done over the season. And if we think we have a chance, we will continue on to Tokyo. If we don't, I would pull the pin, right? I'm a realist, I'm not here to, no, to, to piss around, right? So when we decided and we committed to that, you know, we're full, you know, full steam ahead. And that's where we're going. My mind is only at Tokyo. I don't want to have any other speculations. I don't want to have, you know, waste energy or, you know, talking about all that because ultimately it's not about that right now and it's, it's about Tokyo. So we have to really focus on what's ahead of us. And um, what I do after Tokyo is what I am, what, Am I going to do after Tokyo? I'm going to switch 
um, codes and go across and, and, you know, help Lisa and, you know, help her in her journey to Paralympics. And then after that, I'm going to come home and have a well-earned rest with my family, really connect with um, myself again and, you know, if, uh, not find myself, but just have a break mentally because I've just, I guess it's been a bit of a slog for a very long time um, since the postponement of Tokyo. And since, you know, the journey of trying to get to Tokyo for me, having my son and then, you know, come back to qualify for Tokyo and then trying to have a season and then all of a sudden it's been cancelled. It's been a very long process. So it's really, let's go to Tokyo. I will review and take a breath after that and then we'll see what happens. What a story this is. The world youth title holder, the world junior title holder, the Commonwealth title, the world indoor champion, the world champion. And away she goes now in a bit to be the Olympic champion. Now that is more like it. Very good from Valerie Vili. When did you first realise that you wanted to be a shot putter? Did you ever think that you'll be here right now about to compete in your fifth Olympics? Uh, so the very first time was, uh, well we did athletics, school athletics, you know, and everybody had to do it, I was the biggest kid there, so I was just made to do it. Um, but the biggest thing for me, my massive uh, turning point for me was actually watching, and I just dabbled in athletics at this time, had competed at one, uh, World Youth Championships in uh, Bidgosh in Poland at the age of 14. And the turning point for me was actually watching the opening ceremony of the 2000 Olympic Games at the South Auckland Hospice. And uh, my mum was there and I'm watching it and thinking, damn, one day I want to be there, you know, and watch New Zealand team come out and the big hoo-ha and all the rest of it. It was, it was awesome. It was just such a spectacle that it was just, I was engulfed um, by what I was seeing. However, you know, then the very next day at 9am, uh, unfortunately, my mum passed away. But I talked so much, uh, like, wow, you know, I was, I was just so pumped by watching that. And then my life changed forever the very next day. But then I used that as a as a um, motivation, as a tool for me to utilise my God-given talents and genes to do something with it. Because even though my mum never, you know, you know, wasn't here to, to reap the rewards of what I've been able to gain over the years throughout my career, but I knew for a while that, you know, I wanted to make her proud and she was proud with the lame set six months I'd started in the, you know, in the sport, she was proud of that already. Yeah. So that was really the turning point for me and wanting to completely do athletics, but also commit to, to on this journey. And um, at Bidgosh, for example, I finished 10th on that day at these first World Youth Championships at the age of 14. Two years later, I went back and I won them. So, you know, she was a massive push for me and, you know, she continues to be that, um, you know, that inspiration for me, can, you know, throughout my career, but I'm still throwing steel balls around and I like them. So I take it your mum was your biggest influence mm -hmm. throughout your whole career? Yeah. Anyone else? No, no, yeah. And you know, like when I was coming through the ranks, you know, I really wish that I had, um, you know, I've been around for a very long time, yeah. you know, and I, uh, it's not my goal in life, but I would hope that, you know, wherever I can, I can help the younger athletes coming through, whether it's a pair of shoes, whether it's, you know, pair of tights, whether it's just, you know, giving them a pat on the back or, you know, giving them some words of wisdom or motivation. I would hope that I continue to do that throughout my career, even past when I'm retired. You know, I am an older athlete. I remember competing against older athletes when I came into the sport quite young. And I just felt like we'd, I didn't have that relationship with, with them, you know? I want to change that, you know? I, I really want to change that. So, you know, I get sponsored by Nike and get, you know, tons of shoes or whatever. If I have spare storing shoes, I will give them out, you know, to anybody who's... And I just hope that we're us older athletes that are in our prime and are elite and are, you know, blessed to have these sponsorships, that we can share also, you know, what, what we are given because I had nothing growing up. So I feel quite privileged to be able to then help someone else when, yeah. when I can. I sponsor my sister, yeah. all her clothes, her shoes, everything else, you know. But I'm very grateful for that, yeah. that I'm able to help her th like, like that. Well, you definitely have changed the sport, that's for sure. Well, that's good. And I hope whoever comes in next mm -hmm. continues to do that. Yes. I hope whoever comes in next and, and those people who, uh, those athletes who do come through, I hope they continue there and don't change the, um, the environment or the culture. You know, I really hope they continue to do that and to continue to help. Yes, we have to be selfish because it's an individual sport. Yeah. However, don't lose sight of your morals and, you, and you know, be kind. You know, you don't have to be an asshole. Yeah. You can be kind.